welcome to the Simply Financial Podcast. I'm your host, Christopher Calandra. I want to increase your financial IQ with today's episode, which is going to discuss gross domestic product in 2024 GDP. Uh, The government, through the Bureau of Economic Analysis, reported originally that uh, Q1 GDP growth was 1.6% on an annualized basis. This was well-received and in line with most estimates. In May, though, they revised that downward to 1.3%. So that is a bit of a negative. It wasn't as strong a quarter as originally reported by the government. And I want to point out, and this is a bit worrisome, is that the key reason why there was the downward revision was because of a downward revision in consumer spending. That was pretty much the only reason for the revision downward. I refer refer you to the episode that I did in season eight, uh, excuse me. Yeah. Season eight, episode six about the power of the consumer. And if you listen to that, or if you listened to it already, you know that the consumer is probably the most important part of the U.S. economy. And for that to show some weakness in Q1 is a bit of an uh uh-oh moment. Uh, We're talking about GDP growth. Let me give you a frame of reference for a moment. Is in 2023, GDP growth was 2.5%. In 2022, that seems so far away, Uh, It was 1.9%. So 1.9% in 2022, 25 in 2023. And we started off 2024 at a 1.3% annualized rate. Uh, Not too great. Where might we be now? Uh, According to the Atlanta Fed GDP now, uh, the Fed is projecting an annualized GDP growth in the second quarter of 3.5%. As you can tell by these numbers, that would mean a very, very strong second quarter. I have my doubts about that. So let's talk about some of the thoughts I have just to kind of wrap this topic up. Number one, if you watch any government statistics, which I do, if you listen to this, I talk about a lot of different things. I think government reporting is too optimistic. The conspiracy theorists would say that's because they want to support the Biden administration. So they're always uh, making a mistake being too optimistic. I think there's something to that. Uh, During the Trump administration, it was the opposite. Every month they would come out with unemployment expectations and we would beat the estimates. So I think, I think there's a little too much optimism in what, government forecasters are telling us. Uh, That might be the reason the conspiracy, or they may just not have a good handle on the pulse of what's going on. Uh, The second thing I want to point out is, I don't feel that the second quarter, it doesn't feel like a 3.5% annualized quarter. Uh, Now, I'm just one person. It's anecdotal. It comes from a lot of reading and research, though. So there is a basis. I'm not just making this up out of whole cloth, but I would be really, really surprised if we had such strong GDP growth in the second quarter. 3.5% would be very strong. Now, to be fair, the economy did do that in the fourth quarter. The fourth quarter 2023 annualized number was 3.4%. So that wasn't that long ago. Um, We're only a few months out from that. But again, Given the mood of the country, the sour mood that I am talking about a lot with clients as we meet with them to review their financial plans and goals and their investment strategy is I use the term, the sour mood of the American public. It doesn't feel to me again, that it's a 3.5% quarter. We will see. I will report back to you and let you know if I was right, because I'll uh, pat myself on the back. Um, Or if I'm wrong, I'll point that out too. But again, it doesn't really feel like the economy has picked up so much compared to the first quarter. I don't know what you think, but maybe you feel the same way that I do. And here is the tricky part, is if the economy is too strong, there'll be inflation worries. If the economy is too weak, 
it'll reinforce people's sour view of the economy and by extension, Bidenomics. That's why I feel like the Biden administration and the economy is in a little bit of a tricky position, have to thread the needle, and that might not be easy. And the last thought that I'll have, the last thought that I'll have, I already touched on it, is the thing to watch is weakness in consumer spending. That would be worrisome for the economy, and that would be worrisome for the markets. If we're talking politics, I think that would also be uh, a pessimistic view of Biden's reelection chances. So those are some of the takeaways with this GDP uh, information we now have. As of this recording, it's late May. We'll see what happens the rest of the quarter, but I'll keep you up to date. So please keep listening to the podcast and subscribe to it if you haven't done so already. I'll be back with you on the next episode of the Simply Financial podcast very soon. The views expressed are not necessarily the opinion of Osaic Wealth, Inc., and should not be construed directly or indirectly as an offer to buy or sell any securities mentioned herein. Investing is subject to risks, including loss of principal invested. Past performance is not a guarantee of future results. No strategy can assure a profit nor protect against loss. Please note that individual situations can vary. Therefore, the information should be relied upon when coordinated with individual professional advice. Please note, the information being provided is strictly as a courtesy. When you link to any of the websites provided here, you are leaving this website. We make no representation as to the completeness or accuracy of information provided at these websites. Nor is the company liable for any direct or indirect technical or system issues or any consequences arising out of your access to or your use of third-party technologies, websites, information, and programs made available through this website. When you access one of these websites, you are leaving our website and assume total responsibility and risk for your use of the websites you are linking to. Securities and advisory services are offered through Osaic Wealth, Inc., member FINRA, SIPC, Insurance services offered through Elliott Wealth Management Services, LLC, not affiliated with Osaic Wealth, Inc.